Well, things just uh, went from bad because we're having to work on the camper to worse. This right here is all rotten. And as painful as it may be, we just want to do it right. It's all rotten down in here. Horrible, horrible, nasty. When we fill it up, water will kind of burp or splash out of here as the tank is full. Those are mushrooms. That is like the most disgusting thing ever. There we go. Well, that worked. Hello, we are Ben and Rebecca, and this is our road puppy, Lucy. For the past four and a half years, we've been exploring North America from top to bottom and coast to coast, all while working towards the dream of driving around the world. And you know what? Things are finally falling into place for us. Before shipping across the Atlantic, we need to prepare our camper for the adventure of a lifetime. But what we envision being a two to three week project snowballed into a three month long renovation nightmare upon discovering hidden water damage. We've broken down the project into five videos. The Dometic 12 volt air conditioning installation, replacing a water damaged subfloor, upgrading the toilet to a separate tiny, the renovation process as a whole, and then we'll wrap it up with a video about the mistakes we made so you don't make them yourself. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. And we'd also love to get to know you better. So check out the membership program on our YouTube channel. So here's the situation. If you want to talk about a worst case scenario, this is it. Our simple and novel painting, staining and wallpapering project turned into a floor to ceiling renovation. Before we dive into that story, we do want to tell you that we've added chapters. So if you want to jump ahead to a particular part, like how we fixed the moldy mildewy floor, you can do so down below. And also want to throw out a disclaimer. This is not a how to video, more of a how we did it video. And we watched YouTube videos and talked to friends to figure out how we were going to solve this problem. So if you do know better ways of doing things, Put them in the comments below, but just be nice about it. We've spent the better part of the last three years traveling in our camper. It turns out that for at least that entire time, we've had a constant water leak that has now resulted in a moldy, mushroomy, mildewy, disgusting mess. Yeah, and that was hidden. But some of the water damage we knew about because the grab handle for our stairs uh, was leaking and it was leaking for a very long time but it created a soft spot right in the entry and what really was the icing on the cake was one autumn at home in alaska where you get like 20 30 inches of rain a month it did it in as soon as we discovered that leak that fall in alaska <laughs> after 20 inches of rain we made sure to seal it up and that solved the problem in terms of fur further damaging from the water, damage from water, but the damage to the subfloor was done. It was rotten. The second area of water damage, we were not too surprised to see because the caulking around the cassette toilet in our bathroom was just very problematic. I was always having to re-caulk and it just got to the point where I was just slapping new caulk on there because it just kept pulling away from the walls. Well, this was because there were other, other water leaks, which made the subfloor soft so that the cassette toilet did not have a stable platform to sit on. So there was this constant state of flexing. The other problem that Ben is referencing is our 40 gallon freshwater tank. Uh, it has a six inch inspection hole on the top of it, cap and fitting inside that hole. And uh, it was leaking unbeknownst to us probably long before we even had the truck. But uh, with a little bit of inspecting, determination, we figured out that what was happening was every time we fill that water tank with fresh water, it's pressurizing. 
and then the water is coming up through that inspection hole and the cap and fitting of it and causing a leak. Yeah, we're not talking about a lot of water, maybe a few tablespoons, quarter cup at the most. But you could also even imagine when the tank is full, water would be sloshing out when uh, driving just by nature of movement. All this being said, you might think we weren't regularly inspecting these water compartments, but we were, in fact, on a regular basis, checking in there and looking around. The nature of the leak lent itself, though, to the fact that the water would roll off the sides of the tank down into hidden compartments that we just simply could not see upon inspection. Yeah, and I also want to acknowledge the fact that we travel full time in this vehicle made it infinitely worse. Uh, because that leak was there for a very, very long time, probably before we even bought the vehicle, but it was used on a weekend and maybe an occasional vacation basis. But just being filled up every five to 10 days, it made a nasty, nasty mess. So why exactly was this tank leaking, you might ask? We did too. We took it to a local plastic shop uh, in hopes of actually just sealing the hole and not having to deal with the cap and fitting anymore. What he uh, told us was actually that plastic welding tends not to hold up very well. And in fact, with our particular situation, he found what was called, what he called- In the industry. Monkey shit. <laughs> to Ben, it looked like plumber's putty. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he removed all of that and then properly sealed the cap and fitting the way they should have been done. And uh, that was the main source of the problem. Another problem was that the ventilation for our water tank was higher than the tank itself, when theoretically it should be like maybe equal or less than, but we fixed that down the road. Uh, fortunately, the plastic shop, he was great. Uh, he calls up, said, you're all set. I have your tank sitting upside down with five inches of water for the past few hours and it's not leaking. Problem solved. So that brings us up to the removal of the subfloor. Here we are sitting with a rotten subfloor. Where do we even start? Uh, first up was determining where to cut out the rotten part. We still needed the subfloor to be supported properly by the floor joists. And our biggest concern with this portion of the project was to try to not have to take the entire dinette out because it housed our electrical compartment. It would have been a ton of work. <laughs> so the solution was to repair and replace the subfloor. So the entire portion underneath the bathroom and most of it underneath the water tank, we were able to remove, but then that little sliver in the front doorway, we were able to repair. We had options when it came to removing that chunk of subfloor. What we ended up choosing was the oscillating saw from Harbor Freight instead of a skill saw. The skill saw is definitely a great tool in some ways, but it isn't very forgiving and not great in tight spaces, which we had a lot of. Especially when in the hands of somebody who's not necessarily an expert when it comes to stuff like that. So I could totally see myself cutting all the way through, cutting the aluminum sheet and even cutting the top of the uh, seal floor joist. I just was not going to uh, gamble with that. So the oscillating saw, it was a little slower, maybe a little tedious, but we got straight lines and dad and I were eventually able to get the entire subfloor removed in the area that we were working on at least. So speaking of your dad, this is probably a really good time to say thank you. I don't think we could have done this renovation without our friends and family helping us. Yeah, you guys are great. Uh, the moms, they helped us out with some uh, going away gifts, which was wonderful for purchasing some of the appliances used in this entire renovation. Uh, Russ, he lent us some tools, which was priceless, so we didn't have to buy as many things from Harbor Freight. And uh, my dad, he was an invaluable <laughs> assistant. He helped by you know being there for me during the nastiest, funkiest portions of this process. He was working the camera as well. 
And the biggest one, he let us take over his house and driveway for three months. But I just want to say, we love you guys. You're the best. We're sitting here in Italy recording this video right now. Our camper is probably, maybe at this moment, being loaded onto the belly of a ship to cross the Atlantic so we can start our drive around the world. We wouldn't yeah. be here if they hadn't all helped us. Yep, we love you guys. Well, now that the subfloor is out, a new floor has to go in, which turned out to be surprisingly challenging. Uh, our subfloor is three quarters of an inch thick, and as we soon found out, that's really hard to find. Yeah, five minutes from Dad's house was a Home Depot, and all we could find at this Home Depot was the oddest size. I don't know, it escapes me, but 23 30 seconds. Don't know why it's not just three quarters, but that was for regular plywood. And that regular plywood was also as warped and crooked as a politician, so it just wasn't gonna work. The alternative was to head to the lumber yard across town, where we were able to find a three quarter inch piece of plywood turned out to be birch. But it was perfectly flat. Mm -hmm. And cutting this uh, chunk of new subfloor to shape was pretty basic, just a bunch of 90 degree uh, cuts. And the way dad and I got it to fit, because obviously you want to maybe take off less than you need, but with the help of the oscillating uh, saw and a belt sander, we were able to finagle it into place. We decided an extra layer of protection couldn't hurt, so we also ended up painting the subfloor. So let's move into the repairing portion of the subfloor. And there was that little spot right in the entryway that we didn't want to have to remove the whole dinette and electrical compartment for. And there were a couple other little soft spots as well. But for this, we used a product and it was a two part epoxy. It was pretty awesome. First off, we started with drilling a whole bunch of little holes in the wood that we wanted to repair. And then we brushed this uh, liquid hardener on let it sit for a day, it seemed to be working. And so we did another coat. By day two, it was harder than wood. Worked really well. It was also at this stage that I decided to use JB Weld to fill in the rusted old screw holes into the framework of the camper. And this is because I bought new screws and I was gonna drill new holes. That paint layer that we added on kind of added a little extra thickness too. So we kind of just took to smacking it to get it back into place. And then once we did that, we drilled some pilot holes and used truck screws to secure the new flooring to the floor joists of the truck. Then to level the floor, we used the second part of our epoxy kit, which was more like a putty. I ended up doing two applications and with enough sanding, we ended up with a perfectly level floor. It was awesome. We finished everything off with a nice new sheet of vinyl flooring and we were ready to move on to the next step of the renovation. Well, that's a wrap for the subfloor portion of our renovation process. I hope you found it fun and yet educational at the same time but make sure you hit that subscribe button so you catch all the other videos and we look forward to sharing our travels as we drive around the world. Oh yeah, this is disgusting and a very good point to end the day before we get in a fight with each other. But another fight. You're implying we haven't had a fight yet. <laughs>